it is easier to think of white balance as color balance. It is a control in the camera menu and in post-production software that corrects color casts that we don't always see. It is best understood by showing scenes illuminated both by daylight and tungsten. The latter imparts a warmth to which the eye and brain adjusts, but the camera, yes, the camera needs a bit of help. These images, all the same exposure and no post-production adjustment, show the different white balance settings in the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Lighting is courtesy of daylight from two windows, one behind me and the other to the right. The settings are in the camera menu. There may be a shortcut button on the camera body. If so, it will be labelled WB. Cameras designed for professional use will show the white balance Kelvin numbers for fine tuning, but most photographers will be content with presets. The photographer has the choice of saving images to RAW or JPEG. Now with RAW, you have more flexibility in post-production to adjust white balance and to correct mistakes. This is more difficult with a JPEG because it is digitally processed, but a RAW image is not. If saved to JPEG and the white balance is not right, that is difficult to change. The camera menu has an auto white balance preset, so why bother to take control? Auto is not always accurate. There are subtle variations between different light sources, even direct sunlight and 100% cloud cover. Sometimes colors are rendered cold for JPEGs under a cloudy sky. The cloudy preset will warm the colors. Of course, when saving to RAW, you can keep the auto preset and make any adjustments later. When making changes to RAW images in post-production, you have time to experiment. That is not always possible on a shoot. Save a copy to JPEG, but keep the original RAW file and the adjustments. If using Lightroom, any changes are saved to a separate sidecar file that springs into action whenever the image is opened again. I am showing Finder in Apple Mac. Windows should have something similar. Lightroom permits some changes to JPEGs, but not with the same degree of flexibility. On a landscape shoot, I set the white balance to daylight or cloudy, according to conditions. Church interiors are much more difficult. Very often there are competing light sources from direct sunlight to floodlight. Therefore, I chicken out and resort to auto and make changes in Lightroom. Under challenging circumstances, auto can be quite successful, but saving to RAW and adjusting in post-production allows the photographer to add that final polish, which might not be so easy with a JPEG image. Here are a few images taken with sunny or cloudy presets in camera, followed by adjustments in Adobe Lightroom. Success, however, is courtesy of experimentation, especially as raw images adjusted in post-production can be undone, and that is very important. Tewkesbury Abbey Illuminated by a mixture of daylight and floodlight, taken with cloudy white balance. In Lightroom, it looked too warm. Auto preset made it too cold, but increasing the Kelvin factor manually to 3,396, now that balanced the colors much better. Coulston Common. The camera sunny preset was close to daylight in Lightroom. Both cloudy and auto warmed the image by degrees, so I stayed with daylight. Nipstone Rock, the Stiperstones. 
the as shot setting in camera which unbelievably was on sunny white balance is very close to light from daylight but as i saved to raw i could change it after checking auto i decided that light from cloudy came nearest to my recollection of the shoot much of this is subjective you may not even like my choice of settings but the important thing to remember is that by saving to RAW and changing white balance settings in post-production, you have more time to tweak the image to your heart's content and perhaps most importantly, change your mind six months later.